Ahoy! One of the things that was added to the most recent PTR is the Springtide Bloom event and that comes with a few little secrets as well that we're going to talk about today. But first, let's talk about the event in general and how exactly it works. In many ways, the Springtide Bloom event is very similar to previous events that we already had. You have your gift piles in all towns, now excluding First Light because that town is kind of dead, but instead you have one in Brimstone and those can be collected daily for some rewards. Along with that you have the four usual event locations where any other event also takes place. In this event location you also get some very basic quest line which is basically just there to introduce you to the event as a whole and how it works. And just to be clear at this point, while I really enjoy the Holy Festival inspired visuals of this event, I think that it's more of a side event to all the other major content that we're getting in the next patch. There really isn't all that much new to do in the Springtide Bloom event, other than this one mechanic that I'll talk about in just a second. That said, it comes with some very nice rewards which may actually become more important next patch. In order to even be able to do the event, you need something called Wispy Spritz. There are, as far as I found, two ways to get this. Either you get this from looting the gift piles in towns, every town that you will loot will drop some of these, or you craft them. These can be crafted at the Wispy Spritz station in the event areas themselves. The recipe is 10 fibers, 3 honey and a fire mold. So not particularly expensive and you get 8 Wispy Spritz in return. If you're planning to do a lot of this event, it may be advisable to stock up on some of these resources now, especially if you want to do it early. However, do keep in mind that you get a ton of Wispy Spritz from farming the gift piles as well, so you can fully complete the event, I'm pretty sure, without ever touching this recipe as well if you don't want to buy anything. The only difference is that you will have to wait a few more days. As such, I wouldn't expect massive flipping potential from this. So how does the event mechanic itself work? You need to collect Wispy Blooms, which are plants that you can see on the world map, but also if you look up at the sky there will be rainbow clouds around them. There are many zones, especially around the events, and they show up pretty far on your map, so they're pretty easy to find. So it shouldn't be difficult to find enough of them, even though around the event zones they will probably be farmed a lot as well. These flowers are protected by wispy wasps. These creatures cannot be attacked by any of your normal attacks. I found some outliers where you can deal like one damage to them, but that's not going to be enough to kill them. And sometimes they get taunted by things like an ice pylon. But the moment you move up to that flower, they will come back to the flower and defend it. So it's at least meant to be impossible to loot the flower while these wasps are alive. So what you're meant to do is ignite an exploding plant near you and then lure the wasps to you. They will usually come towards you when they're aggroed. And this explosion can actually hurt the wasps. It takes three explosions to take the wasp down. In order to do this effectively, you want to make sure that they are grouped up and none of them is glitching around and running back and forth because when that happens, you often end up only blowing up two of them and then you have one last wasp that you need to waste more resources for in order to kill it. If the wasps get close to you, they deal a fair amount of damage through a bleed and this bleed also prevents you from detonating any nearby plants. So you kind of just dodge away a little bit, walk away a little bit, ignite the next bomb and then have them come to you and blow that up. And you have to watch out not to get too close to the flower in the middle because otherwise they'll just pull back to that instead of going to where you want them to go. Once all three are dead, you can loot the flower which will clear the event area and then provide you with wispy bloom petals. When multiple people are in the area, it seems they're all being provided with the Wispy Bloom petals, so it's not like you're gonna miss out if someone else is looting the flower. Additionally, the wasps also have a random lower chance to drop Wispy Wasp Goo. And honestly, for most rewards, that one is the one that you're really after, so it's a fair bit of RNG involved in the farming process. These farmed resources can then be exchanged at the Adornment card. You can exchange the Wispy Wasp Goo for a premium spring token at a 1 to 1 rate. The Wispy Bloom petals can be exchanged at a 5 to 1 rate, giving you a normal spring token, not a premium one. A premium token is worth 25 normal tokens, so getting a single Wasp Goo is worth roughly as much as solo clearing 4 of these flowers. In order to exchange these tokens for rewards, you also need to build reputation for the event, but that is a very quick process. For example, each of the gift piles in the event areas gives you 50 reputation. I'm fairly certain the same is also true for looting the gift piles in towns. Along with that, any of the conversions made, either trading the goo or the petals, 
in the shop will always give you 50 reputation per conversion as well. With the event capping out at 4000 reputation, I was able to reach that by playing casually for two days without using any tricks and that was while my game constantly kept crashing because of a bug that was unfortunately introduced through these flowers as well. In that time I was able to get 10 premium tokens, which is as much as one of the premium skins from the event. And speaking of rewards, let's talk about those a little bit, starting with the ones in the actual shop. Here we have Springtide Dram, which is your usual luck consumable, like from many other events at this point. Not that important, but if you like those, go for it. And then there is the Springtide Wafer. This one gives you extra Wispy Bloom while gathering and lasts 30 minutes. I would highly recommend using this because it doubles the amount of Wispy Blooms you get to 14. So this is absolutely worth it while farming, even if you're just going out for a little bit, you kind of make up for that in just a few Wispy Blooms, though you may not necessarily need to buy it. And the third one here is the Springtide Crumble, which just gives you an extra 33 constitution for 25 minutes. Now all of these consumables can be bought here, but you also get them by looting the gift piles in town. So often you will have quite a few of those on hand after a while anyways and you may not necessarily need to buy any of them unless you specifically want to collect one. Next we have the Shepherd tier. Here we have three dice that are specifically from the Springtide Bloom event, which is a Lyman Cello, Royal Azalea and Morning Mist die. Along with that we also have a bunch of green patterns. The dice are 10 normal tokens while the patterns are 15 normal tokens. Now we get to the perks of the patterns with the legendary version because in my opinion that one is actually a bit more interesting. As you can see this time it's only armor patterns. And here's the tier you probably really want to get to which is the herald tier because this is where most of the good rewards are. We have two skins here the beekeeper's jacket as well as the springtime ruffles and you also have the flower child dance and frolic in the grass. I'm kind of sad they don't have something similar to the throw snow emote but with throw color instead which would have been very fitting for this event and all the color explosions that happen in various places and whatnot but maybe that will be in the premium shop. Along with that we also have a bunch of cosmetics we have the barrel of flowers, the crater of flowers, the pot of wispy blooms, the pinwheel and the springtide wall light as well as the springtide ceiling light and then some more premium ones as well with the springtide banner and the sacks of pigment. The cheaper ones here are 20 normal tokens, the premium ones are either one premium token or two premium tokens even. But what really caught my attention are the legendary patterns down here because once again these are locked 600 gear score and you can choose your attribute. Let's look at the perk buckets on New World Database a bit. We skip over the green patterns here because as usual they seem to have the slightly better chance to roll good perks because they're skipping the different types of reinforced gathering luck and maybe something else but they don't seem to be significantly different from crafting say Shade Walker. The material requirements are different but not necessarily cheaper. The legendary version in particular is interesting because it has two locked perks, refreshing and physical aversion. Again, you can choose your attributes, so this is very similar to the summer event reward which provides you with elemental aversion and refreshing which I talked about not too long ago. And the perk buckets for the last guaranteed perk are the same as well. So you have a very high chance to roll resilient. On boots for example it is 32%, it's slightly lower on the other pieces because you have to factor in that they usually have another perk that they have a high chance to roll. But generally speaking, there's a very high chance to get resilient plus physical aversion plus refreshing. Now you may say with the next patch buffing fire staff, elemental aversion is clearly better than physical aversion, so why would I want physical aversion? Now, here's one thing to keep in mind. Everyone currently is banking rightfully on the meta being elemental aversion. Because of that, most people are gearing towards elemental aversion. And the result of that will be a meta where on average elemental damage will be a little bit lower than physical damage in most situations, excluding outliers where they have the full resistance against it and are fully slotted on Onyx. So there may be quite a few players that figure, okay, if everyone is going elemental aversion now, then I will no longer use elemental gems in my ranged physical weapons. This is especially relevant in the context of elemental aversion always being active and not just after dodges like shirking fortification. So we could end up in a scenario where you get significantly more damage out of for example having an opal compared to having an elemental gem. This is especially true for the bow and the blunderbuss if you're running a strength build. 
Not quite sure if it will actually end up being the case for the musket where you have to factor in the int perk as well. But either way, if we see those non-elemental gem builds return to the meta, maybe also to counter something like fire mages, then this could possibly not be the worst perk to have. It could actually be beneficial to slot at least some physical aversion, maybe have some decent split between physical and elemental aversion. Same would also be true if a Void Blade takes off in the meta and you actually need to slot elemental gems against melee damage as well, where physical aversion with an opal on your armor works a lot better. So as you can see, a lot of things to consider here and definitely worth having a few pieces of this, at least in your storage, just in case it becomes useful. But there are more and some secret wars from this event as well. So for looting the gift piles in towns, you get some additional rewards. You get your wispy spritz that you can use obviously, you get diamond gypsum and you can get up to six of that per day again so you can actually get two gypsum orbs out of this. And additionally you also get the consumables that I already showed you, sometimes, this depends on luck, but you also very often, though not always, get dye. The joyous gift piles have a chance to drop any craftable dye currently in the game. They don't just drop the pigments, they drop the actual dye. And if this drop chance is triggered, they always drop two or three of that dye color. If you've been making gold off of selling dye until now, I highly recommend flipping what you still have, because this is the amount of dyes I got just from looting all towns twice. So you can imagine by the end of the whole event, if you consistently loot this, you will have a lot of dye. But different from previous events, it's actually very rewarding to loot the gift piles, or the delightful gift sacks, in the four event locations as well. These have a chance to drop normal Springtide tokens and they also drop Springtide Jingle, which is just a sack of gold as far as I can tell. It doesn't seem to do anything else. But thanks to New World Database, we can find out that the drop tables for these also contain all of the patterns, including the green patterns and the legendary patterns. This is not the case for the gift piles in the different cities, so they basically serve two different purposes here. And then there is another little secret extra reward. This one was actually hidden in one of the lore pages for the event. If you loot Prisma Blooms during the event, they not only drop their normal pigments, but they also drop springtime tokens. I tested this with the triple stacked Prisma Blooms in the Sandworm Arena and they all drop tokens. Keep in mind though that as long as you have the consumable active, you get almost the same amount of tokens out of just farming a single flower field. So it doesn't really make that much of a difference, especially if you're not at a hotspot with multiple Prisma Blooms close to each other. We have a lot to talk about in the next days and one topic that I really want to cover is why crafting best in slot will be easier. So that is probably something I will do first, but I also want to talk about some data mining and some other interesting stuff. If you'd like to see that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. If you want some early trading tips before I make a video about them, you can support me on my Patreon and thanks to my patrons for supporting this video. Also, thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.